All right, shove it, squad. It's the master of the smack and the one who makes your ribs go crack. Somehow I've become the main channel to document the downfall of Billy Corgan's NWA, and I thought I'd give you all an update. NWA is supposed to be a wrestling federation which represents the traditional southern wrestling style. They were, briefly, the third biggest wrestling company in the US. They had recognisable talents and also created some of today's stars. On the whole, it was a decent little setup until AEW hoovered up all the talents and the pandemic happened. They never really recovered from that, as in return the shows became smaller and smaller. Eventually there were rumours that Billy Corgan had managed to strike up a TV deal with the CW Network and there was hope that this promotion could get back on the front foot. There was a lot of hope over a year ago now the NWA was being picked up by the CW Network, it was going to put wrestling back into the limelight, with another big network choosing to air wrestling. But after things went, hmm, a bit wrong on the NWA Samhain pay-per-view, the decision was made by executives to just put NWA on their app and not on their television channel. It was still hoped that this would still bring in some new viewers and make NWA more accessible to fans. Whilst the CW app is free, it's proven to be not very accessible. You have to be using a smartphone or a tablet. You have to also be inside a certain country, like the US. And you have to be a complete moron to try it in the first place. I'm struggling to see what the benefits of this partnership are. Whatever budget they're providing, the NWA looks smaller than ever. The shows are inconsistent, and the top comment on most of the YouTube video from fans is saying they wish they were able to still watch the show. It's not the first time they've made the decision to move all their content to a platform which fans couldn't easily access. They already did this with the Fight TV network, and it didn't work out so well. The current champion of the promotion is EC3, who has not actually wrestled on the programme for a month and a half, and even that was pre-taped in late January. He's been wrestling more for Ohio Valley Wrestling lately, so is that now a bigger show? EC3 has stopped talking about NWA so much, and this is the furthest from the spotlight he has ever been. Loyalty is one thing, but this has been career self-destruction. He is still the champion for what it's worth. You have to wonder if EC3 regrets any of his decisions, or if he's so blinded by his personal principles. Which, by the way, I do respect from him having. But man, this guy should have been something good. There is nobody compelling for him to work with inside the company, and when he does turn up on telly, he has a look on his face questioning what his life has become. James Mitchell is still on the show somehow, and that might surprise some of you due to the spot he did on that one pay-per-view. But Billy Corkin is also a loyal guy. James Mitchell could be a useful character on the show, and let's be honest, even if he didn't do what he did on that pay-per-view, the show was still a complete joke. And to demonstrate what a joke the show is, a current reoccurring segment is Cooking with Carson or something like that. It's like, uh, I don't really know what the point of it is, to be honest. I guess it's like a wrestling talk show. But they don't even seem to talk about wrestling. It's just strange comedy about food, and it goes on forever. They cook, they crack some jokes, and it ends. Nobody gets over. Following on from the Samhain pay-per-view, they are still working with the Insane Clown Posse in their JCW company. In fact, they've been working with several indie companies, most likely as another cost-saving measure. Gotta love the random ice machine next to a staircase in a random gym. Why bother? The budget is so low that most of the show looks like it was shot during the Corona Crunch era. It's dark, it's gloomy, and there's nobody here. When the NWA first relaunched, they had a number of recognisable wrestlers on the show. A lot of guys and girls who had just left TNA. This made the show easier to get into because you were already familiar with the characters. Now there's pretty much nobody, it's just depressing. That is unless you consider Mike Knox exciting. They also have Trevor Murdoch and Bram. They actually had Juventud Guerrero main event a recent show. I think Vampiro and Aaron Stevens appear sometimes. It could be worse, it could be one of the stars NWA have created on their own. Crickets, shut up or I'll smack you one. I'll have you know they've got gags to gim. Cheese. Or Rolando. No, I didn't think so either. The next pay-per-view after the famous Samhain pay-per-view that caused all this mess in the first place was supposed to be Hard Times. And it was indeed Hard Times, because they shot the show and then just used the footage to turn it into five episodes of Power TV. Presumably to save money for the company. It's things like this that kill any momentum and stop people caring. Nobody wants to watch episodes that were taped five months earlier. It doesn't feel like must-see telly. Now talking of their struggles to air shows and produce content, they've recently started taping YouTube specials that consist mostly of one pointless match. They have not had a single video game more than 10,000 views in the last two months. And even that one was because Vampiro was in it. Hell, the views were way better when Tyrus was the champion. That really gives meaning to the term, any publicity is good publicity. But then there was a small update since I wrote this script and they did just post a match between EC3 and Matt Cardona. 
It's like they somehow knew I was about to drop this video, and that match is getting some views, but it was taped six months ago. You would guess that YouTube views do give a window into whether or not a wrestler is popular or not, and that leads me on nicely to my next point. The only person in the company who was getting serious YouTube views, which probably means that she's a draw, was Camille. Yeah, she's gone now. The lady who took the belt off her was Kenzie Page who makes the boys rage, and unfortunately for her, the shoes are too big to fill. No disrespect to Kenzie Page, it's just a big ask. Camille to AEW is not yet actually official and she's taken a break from wrestling, but she did recently post a picture and she's certainly in fighting shape. Far too impressive to be on the indies, but man, NWA is missing her. In other news, they're doing a spin-off reality TV show which will air on the CW app, in fact it already is, and they originally thought it was going on the CW TV channel. The series, known as Adventures in Carneyland, appropriate, it did not make it onto the CW TV network and has been dumped on the app. So far, six episodes have aired, and guess who it focuses on? Of course, it's the smashing pumpkin Billy Corgan, the biggest star of the company. Laughably, several of the episodes focus on poor NWA ticket sales, which confirms this programme is most certainly shot in reality. I'm not sure who this show even appeals to. Billy Corgan is not a likeable character. People just want him to play his music and shut up. And it doesn't appeal to wrestling fans, because I can't imagine the average fan is interested in the inner workings of booking a show for six people to attend. Talking of Corgan, he's all over the NWA show. He's on commentary, he's doing interviews, and he's mentioned constantly. And this has been an ongoing criticism that I've had of him since his TNA days, but I really hate how he isn't afraid of the wrestlers. But oh no, they're afraid of him. Probably due to his freakishly large head. I just think an old man who isn't an athlete should be cowering in fear from the wrestlers, but not here. Nobody's getting over with Corgan around. And I'm not sure if it's just me that can't stand this guy, but there's something about him that rubs me the wrong way and wants me to turn over the channel whenever his bald head is taken up the screen. He's so swarmy and cocky, it really does feel like the NWA is just a vanity project for him. And that character would be fine if he was a wrestler. If he was a wrestler who was going to get some comeuppance, but I've never seen this guy take a single bump. The company still try to do social media, but nobody cares. At least when Tyrus was champion, it actually drew attention to them, even if it was negative. Now their posts only get a few hundred likes and single figure comments. There is no buzz. Your local indie show can generate more of a buzz. People may have actually been low-key paying attention because they are waiting to laugh when Tyrus lost the belt. I do feel like I need to find some praise though, it can't all be bad. For starters, the women actually have some sex appeal, TNA takes some notes. They have a good variety of women, because variety is the spice of life, like a punch to the gut. They aren't featured on the show as much as I would like, but this is an area they can do something with. The women's division's probably the highlight of the show. Although, I'm not sure if the name Taylor Rising is a sex pun, or if she's Triple H's daughter. No, I actually do enjoy this division. The women look like wrestlers, they have personality, and they're fresh but easy to watch for new viewers. Kenzie Page will probably go on to have more success. She just doesn't have as high of a ceiling as Camille did, but she is going to be a name people are more familiar with soon. She gives me female MJF vibes. There's also a few young and upcoming cruiserweights to keep an eye on, like Colby Carino and the Southern Six, they all entertain me. They also have their own bloodline going on, the Sons of Samoa. They're actually a part of the real Samoan family, more like the Sons of Diabetes. I'm not sure why these guys didn't make the cut instead of Jacob Fatu. NWA recently announced they'll be running their first pay-per-view since Samhain, which will leave a 10-month gap between pay-per-views. Although, of course, they might just end up turning it into episodes of Power again, because they haven't taped any more since. It's hard to have any faith in this promotion at this point, but I guess it's a positive that they're still trying to find ways to survive. For what it's worth, the show doesn't feel like any other wrestling product out there because the in-ring stuff isn't flips and dives, so at least they're trying to create their own identity and be different. I'm just not sure there's many wrestlers worth watching here. Ultimately, this is the Billy Corgan show. He's the man with the money, what he says goes, he's the biggest star of the promotion and he sure seems to know it. It's a vanity project, but you have to wonder what the game plan is here because the show has never had so little buzz since the company relaunched before AEW came about. Billy seems to have an obsession with bringing back the territories, and they do this because many of the NWA wrestlers own their own wrestling schools, so they use them and call them the territories. But this is not like the territory days of old, because most of them are just a handful of green wrestlers in a high school gym. It's not something people will ever pay to watch. So you have to question what the end goal is here especially when everything on the NWA show is getting smaller and smaller. Nobody wants to watch a dying company, and it's obvious. 
A few years ago I could understand why some people followed this program, but now it just doesn't make much sense. Let me know in the comments if you're still watching the show, because I'm struggling to find anyone who actually is. But I'd like you to let me know why you watch the show, because to me it doesn't make much sense. And if you don't agree with that, I'll slam you for offence.